Hi guys, it's me Sam and I'm joined by my friend Steve Cambites. It's great to be here, thanks for having me. Good to have you man. Uh, Steve is the owner of a company called Bad Apple Amplifiers. That's right. And makes some absolutely incredible, hand-wired, made with love, great valve amplifiers. That's right. And noted, he said valve. He's an English guy. <laughs> we call them tubes, so just in case you guys get that confused, valves and tubes, yeah. it's the same thing. Today you're gonna to listen to my British tones from Steve's British Style amplifiers. Style amplifiers. Absolutely. <laughs> British with British makes some good sauce. Tell yeah. You what. We've been drinking some tea and uh, yeah, just having was some it fun. Was it real great? No, it was, it was actually Tesco's finest English okay. breakfast. But don't forget milk and sugar in that tea. Well, I'm already sweet enough, mate. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> This amp would have come with 5081s traditionally, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, historically would have come with. So what I'm, I'm trying to do something that people want or would like to have, but Marshall never ever offered right. that option. Right. So instead of 5081s, uh, it has EL34s, there still you go. British yeah. sound. Um, this has a 1987 circuit in it, which is the 50 watt plexi. Uh, it has a master volume in the back and uh, does your typical, you know, rock and roll grind. And we've got the effects loop. Effects loop in the rear, yeah. Uh, yeah, man. Buffer effects loop in the Buffer rear. Buffer effects loop. Uh, basically a fed basement circuit back in those days on the early Marshalls. Uh, yeah, so we're just running a tube driver into the front end of this to give it a little bit of a push over the cliff. Yeah, <laughs> give it some more like, you know, tube grind. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we've got a Strymon Blue Sky in the loop, making me happy with a little reverb. So let's check it out. Digging it, yeah.
is the eve. <laughs> well, this amp is white. It's white, yes. Yeah, it's, it's... I love the look of this. You know, this is like Randy Rhodes. Yeah, uh, totally. Uh, man, just a white Marshall looking thing. What could be cooler than that? Yeah, white, plexi looking Marshall. Bad and it looks like a, yeah, badass. Yeah. Bad Apple ass. Yeah. It looks like a plexi. Yep. I love it. The vintage look. Yep. That, you know, is so ubiquitous with like the old school rock. Oh, hand, you know? hand in hand with rock and roll, you know. Uh, big stage, big Marshall Stacks. Yeah. Jimi you know. Hendrix. Oh, yeah. Richie Blackmore. Uh, well, what makes this thing unique is this looks like a plexi, has the plexiglass faceplate on it. Right. Not a, not a, a metal front. Right. And, uh, but it's a JCM 800 style amplifier, 2204, right. so 50 watt. So it's just a two holer, vertical two holer, and uh, it has that look, yeah. but sounds totally different than yeah. Plexi. Oh yeah. It sounds like a JCM 800. Best of both worlds. Yep. Uh, we've got the effects loop in the back again. Right. Yep. And uh, yeah, we're just running it just as we were before with a little reverb and occasionally with the tube driver in the front, but sometimes without, I'll annotate accordingly over the playing. So these amps are all hand-wired. There's no printed circuit boards in them. They're all hand-wired by me. Yeah, the attention to detail, I've got to say, man, it's, it just blows my mind. Thank you. Like the first time you, you brought these round a few months ago, I was just gobsmacked by them. Yeah, you just put it in a magic box, add the ingredients, stir it up, <laughs> wait a day, and come out, and that's what you got. It's awesome. <laughs> Rock it. Well, let's, let's hear this thing. want to know where that where I got the idea for Bad Apple. Mm -hmm. So I was I've always been in the circles of vintage amplifiers, collectors, mm -hmm. and uh, the story is uh, I'll start from way back in the day. I was uh, touring with a band called Jeff Healy and we were touring in support. With Jeff Healy? Yeah. Wow. And he had a guitar player with him named Philip Sace. Yeah, the legend. The legend, yeah. 
And uh, I was talking with Phil about how he gets his tones and stuff. And he's like, well, I've got this old like, amplifier. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, cool. Like, old thing, can't be worth much. thought that was pretty cool. So we did the big North American tour. And then I came back home and I looked for a basement amplifier. Yeah. Like what he had, because I wanted to get the tones that he was getting. Right. And I found out they're really expensive. Incredibly expensive. So I'm like, well, I'm not really going to spend my rent and my mortgage yeah. payments on an amplifier. How hard can they be to build? Mm -hmm. So I set out to build this basement amplifier. And I think it, it was a blackface basement. Um, 64 to 67, might have even been an A864 mm -hmm. circuit. And uh, I wanted to have what Phil had. Yeah. So I went out, got all the parts, and found the chassis, and transformers, the capacitors, and resistors. Wow, that's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. Scouring the earth to find these parts, and I built it. And then I went to an amp show, and uh, the collectors were there, and they wanted to know a bit about this amplifier that I built, mm -hmm. this, this basement. And uh, I said, well, it's actually, I built it. He's like, well, it looks pretty real. Yeah, that's what blows me away about your stuff, is it just looks so genuine. You know, the attention to detail. Thank you. Just blows my mind, man. What the guy said, this looks too good to be real. There's always a bad apple on every bunch. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that kind of stuck with me. There's a bad yeah. apple on every bunch. And uh, I'm like, later on, that you know what he said stuck in my head. And yeah. I'm like, well, I'm going out of my way to make accurate reproductions of what once was. Yeah. And I am the bad apple in every bunch. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea about the Philip Sass connection there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love that guy. What a player. Oh yeah. And his account? No, his his. Where's he from? He was born in Wales, but he grew up in. Yeah, Ontario. And, yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I did know that. Yeah. Wales guy. The and Jeff Monster. Healy as well, man, one of my favorite players. Monster players, like, and Philip is such a genuine human being. Is he? That's not just, to um, he's all about music. Yeah. Like, he's not really, from what I know about him, and, you know, you know I, I've only spent a certain amount of time with him, but he was just all about music and not yeah. caught up in the whole fame game. Thing. Right. He was just, I'm here to play music. I'm here to show you my art and this is what I do. Here yeah. I am. And then, you know, that right. kind of struck with me and, you know, trying to reproduce what Phil did with his basement amplifier. Yeah. And that's, that, he is what set me on this, this wave of, of building amplifiers. He's, he's really the inspiration for doing what I, what I do. Super. Yeah, absolutely. Right then, Steve, so we've got the big brother of the 50. I would call this the, the big daddy. The big daddy. The, the big, big daddy, daddy is daddy. right. Yeah. Big, well, big box, plexi looking amplifier. 100 watt. 100 watts, yeah. Pure power. Four EL34s. Yeah. yeah. And we didn't do anything with this. We didn't put anything in the front, nothing in the back, just straight up. Jeez. Yeah, man. I, I, I've actually had to put the earplugs in. It's, uh, it's beating me up a little bit, but in a good way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So, um, like again, you and I have seen so many of our guitar heroes playing these big box plexi yeah. super lead it's 1959. Iconic. Yeah, absolutely. But I wanted something different. You know, I wanted the look of that amplifier, yeah. but I wanted a different amp inside the chassis. Best of both worlds. So this is a 2203 style circuit, different tone stack, still solid state. Rectified um, JCM 82203. That's what's in here. But it looks like a plexi, but it's a vertical two holder 82203 in a big box super lead plexi. Yeah, yeah, you know, great tone, and you've got that classic vintage look. That British English. <laughs> How, how, what do we say? Is it English or British? What do you identify? For correct. What um, do you identify as, though? I think it's it's a small enough island to separate it any more okay. than Great Britain. You know, oh, okay. I've lived in Scotland. I've lived in England. Uh, I definitely think of it as the UK. Right. <laughs> Together, so yeah. Yeah, man. Love it. So there we are. 
Oh, this one has a post base inverter master volume that's in here as well. I just wanted to try something a little different for the, the customer and uh, he uses it. He pins the front end and rolls back the master volume in the back end. It also has a uh, effects in the rear as well. Right. Yeah, that's handy. Absolutely. Getting the reverb in the back and being able to use the amp gain. <laughs> Right then, Steve, we've switched sides so we can go deaf yeah. equally yeah. in yeah, uh, both right. ears. Chill both ears, yeah. <laughs> so this is a JTM 45 replica. Clone, yeah, replica, yeah. 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 This amp is the uh, Fender Basement copy. Right. It has KT66s in it. Yeah. Uh, different than the other Marshall amps, which are EL34s. Mm -hmm. It's Kinkless Tetrode. Oh, this is what that stands for. I didn't know that. Yeah. I think this is my favourite after playing all of them. Uh, perhaps that's because I love the basement so much. Right. Uh, this compresses so nicely. I mean, it's a different animal oh, than what we've goodness. been playing here. Today. Yeah. Not really a high gain thing, but this definitely is what put, uh, you know, what do we call that? English or British amps on the market, <laughs> which is the JT45. Kind of the flagship for Jim Marshall and his company. Yeah. So this is really a uh, an exact copy of that amplifier. Mm. Even down to the Phillips mustard capacitors. The uh, radio spares transformers that are in. Yeah. Love it. Got the uh, black the, switches. Yeah. Yeah. The upside down English thing. The proper way. Yeah, that's right. So there's something cool, a little story about this amplifier. I had it down at my good friend's studio, MCC Studios, with. Dave and uh, 
Johnny sits back down there. There you go, yeah, they were the using boys. It, yeah, that's right, they were using it on a few different recordings. And uh, a wonderful player named um, Russell Broom uh, played this on a few recordings. Right. I got some feedback um, from yeah. the guys about Russell, what Russell was saying. So I'm, I'm quite elated about that, Russell. This is shout out to you. <laughs> I like the sound of this, uh, this particular amplifier. Yep. So where can we learn more about Bad Apple amplifiers and where can we purchase them? Well, they can be purchased online. Okay. Uh, you can contact the website and uh, models that I make are all on there for you to see. www.badappleamps.ca Put the link right here. And yeah, go there, see what I do. See, uh, I make American amplifiers, British style amplifiers. and a whole whack of different models that you can choose from. Yeah, and if people are living in Calgary, is there a place that they can go to? Yeah, I've had some amplifiers at MCC Studio for uh, you know demo testing and stuff like that. Um, or you can contact me directly if you want to try one of these out at Great or something like that too. Fabulous, there we go. All right guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to visit the website here to check out Steve's stuff. You're going to put it right here? R right there. Right there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for watching and see you again soon. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Bye -bye.